game for the Western Kentucky University Hilltoppers. Who are they playing today, Ben? Virginia Commonwealth University, which Alex thought I was joking when I said that. Uh, he, I did. I thought he just picked the first VC and U word that came to his mind, but they are, in fact, that is, in fact, the real name. Uh, once again, it is myself, Alex Heichelbeck, Benjamin Subcheck, and Jazzy Josh Raymer. How are you doing, Josh? Good. How are you guys? Fantastic. Uh, we were talking before the game, uh, the last, so obviously we, we have not witnessed uh, a VCU game yet today, but uh, the last one that we covered was Western versus Saginaw, which was a pretty lopsided, sound, affair. Pretty lopsided yeah. affair, pretty sounding defeat for uh, Western. Now obviously the skill level is a pretty disparate s skill levels between VCU and Saginaw. So let's go ahead and get some predictions out. Um, first of all, how do you think, do you think Western's going to have made any changes after last round and how do you see this game going? I think they'll play a lot faster, a lot crisper counters, a lot more efficient communication and teamwork, and I see a, we'll say, 3-1 to one WKU victory. All right, Ben Subject, same to you. You know, I don't think their strategy is going to change that much. I think the strategy that they've been employing is something they've had a problem with all season, uh, based specifically only on their record. So I'm, I think they're going to play almost exactly the same. Here's what's going to be the difference. These people are not going to have the same arms as Saginaw Valley. They're going to get more catches. I think WKU is going to get a 3-1 victory, just like uh, Jazzy said. I agree. Uh, and again, I, I have no background on VCU, but if Western were to play a defensive game, I have a feeling this is going to be a semi-defensive team as well. And we definitely don't want to get stuck into that, you know, the unstoppable force, immovable object kind of situation. Uh, I got the chance to actually talk to Big Bird Alex Sorrells after last game. And uh, before I'd even had a chance to say anything to him, he echoed almost our exact comments from the last game, talking about the lack of speed from Western, the lack of organized team throws, and the fact he said their defense was so scattered. So here we go off the line. Kind of a slow start for both teams off the line. I think Western gave away one ball there. Wow, okay. Yeah, it was block off the ball. Block, block, dead ball. Bit of confusion there, apologies. All right, so both teams, I think, here kind of feeling each other out. Now, one thing that I think Western's going to, you're, you're going to see, Saginaw Valley was a much more physically imposing team. Am I correct here, Ben? Uh, absolutely. You can already see that uh, VCU not playing nearly as aggressive as Saginaw Valley, and WKU still playing their passive style, but I think it's going to work out in their favor this time. Right, and while, uh, I mean, one of, one of the things I want to kind of make note here, because I don't know how obvious it is on the video, uh, they have a lot of smaller players on VCU. And, uh, I mean, aim small, miss small. Small targets going to be harder to hit. Um, so it'll be interesting to kind of see how long it takes Western to figure out their dynamic. Who are their blockers? Who are their catchers? Who are the people that we need to focus on and get out quick? Um, and, I mean, obviously VCU is going to have the same issue. So with you being a former coach, how far into a game, how much time do you need to get a good read on the other team? I'd say after about the first point, you should have a pretty good idea of what you're up against. The problem that we always ran into when I was the coach was that we got overconfident because we'd always come out very strong in the first point and then flat as a pancake in point two, and we'd just get rolled over. So I think once you figure out what kind of team you're up against, you can't let off the pedal if you find out it's a team that's maybe a little weaker than you are. Excellent, excellent. All right. so, Already I'm noticing VCU um, has a pattern. They throw into the dirt a whole lot more than Saginaw Valley does. It's very nice to see that on, on a note for WKU. Uh, not as fun to watch because obviously you want some accuracy, you want those hits, those the, the heart-pounding, crushing hits, but you're not going to see that as much in this game. That's, uh, that's unfortunate for the viewership, though. Yeah, uh, and you know, the and I think, you know, it's like every sport, it kind of goes through cycles. And, you know, I, I don't think it's all rose-tinted glasses, but I remember when I was playing, I remember this sport being so fast-paced. Uh, I remember it wouldn't be out of place to see a six-point half in a game uh, with some time to spare, maybe. So I think the kind of league as a whole is starting to favor a little bit more methodical, slower-paced strategy overall. Now, what's going to be interesting is after this captain meeting, and Josh and I were talking about this, we're going to... Um Specifically, Alex Mumas, who is the... Uh, Timeout called by Western there. The referee over there uh, who is officiating, Alex Mumas is a, a legend in this sport. Um, do you, can you see what's happening down there, Jazzy? I can't... Can you help? 
All right, looks like we got an injury going down down there. So someone, uh, Alex had to, uh, who is our head EMT here, is, is heading down immediately. I can't see who it is, but should we, do you want to go to a break for a second as, as we get this sorted out? All right.